Welcome, Shegun Fatuma, Fat Agbons. Obi Ojima, do your back already? Anu Ojo, Eric Osa, Osadola, Rosia White, Pat Agons. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Here we are, we are back again on our usual platform. Let's keep on sharing. Let's go and invite everybody that has missed us. <laughs> Let's go look for them. Let's go look for them. Let's go share the link with them. Bidemi, Asharis, Layoshaus, Abikosh. Let's go look for the people who have been missing us all this while. Jigem Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go share the link. Write something because we are going to be talking to the ladies this week. We are going to be talking to the ladies today and this whole week. And uh, so let's go invite everyone. Let's go invite everybody, as many people as possible. Let's go get them. Let's go get them. And uh, it's going to be exciting now. It's going to be exciting. Now we are back. <laughs> Facebook has let us come back. <laughs> so um, welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, here we go. Yeah, if you are ready to go, we just start immediately. We just start immediately. And uh, this morning, I spoke about ladies not thinking of marriage, but thinking of self-sufficiency. Thinking of how to become self-sufficient. And that's what I want to continue. I want to continue that message in the morning. Uh, and the title of this message is, A Lady Must Be Self-Sufficient in These Areas Before Marriage. So I'm going to give the areas where uh, every lady must become self-sufficient before she ventures into marriage. So there are some areas where every girl, every lady, must become self-sufficient before she ventures into marriage. Now, uh, I want to start this teaching today by, uh, by saying that, unfortunately... Uh, too many people mistakenly think that a woman's fulfillment is <laughs> in marriage and how many children she has. And that is completely wrong. That is completely wrong. There is nowhere in the Bible where it says that unless a woman is married, she's not fulfilled. This we must get right. A woman's fulfillment does not have to be involved, involved in, I mean, involving marriage. A woman does not have to be married to be fulfilled. That is a wrong notion, it's a mistake, and it's a notion that breeds discrimination. It's a notion that brings about inferiority complex. Is a notion that makes people to feel superior to others. It's a notion that is not godly. It's an ungodly notion. Um, it is wrong to think that those people who are not married are, are, not, are not complete, are not all, are not, sufficient, are, not, uh, are not fulfilled in life. So the very first thing I want us to know today is that when we are talking about women, that we should not begin to talk about them in terms of married or not married. And I think all of us, we need to come against that assumption. We all need to raise up our voice, both men and women, against that established stereotype of our world that makes people to think that a woman is assessed by a marital status. That is so discriminatory. Just the same way people used to discriminate against women, that women could not vote, that women could not be counted in census, that women were not human. The same way today, the same message is being passed across to, uh, to every woman that is not married, to every woman that is not having children, that she is inferior. We are indirectly telling those ladies 
who are single, who are not married, and who don't have children, that they are not normal, that they are inferior, that they are worse than their counterparts that are married and that are having children. It is wrong. It is one of the most destructive, uh, you know, no lies of Satan. And it is Satan that has brought that lie. And that lie must be destroyed. All of us who know better must begin to raise our voices and talk against it and come against that lie, that deception that a woman is only a woman uh, to the extent to which she is married or to how many children she is having and all that. Because that understanding has brought about so many tragedy. There is so much pain in our world today only because of that concept. Because women have gone into marriage, women have gone into relationships whereby they know that if they had an option, if they had a choice, they would not have gone into that relationship. If they had been taught to know that it is normal that you could still be a full woman, that you could still be a fulfilled woman, that you could be still be a happy woman, a satisfied woman, a woman that is totally complete without marriage, without a husband, without children. If people had known, people would, half of the women and even half of families that are suffering today in marriages, in where they are not loved, where they are not accepted, where they are not valued, no, a lot of women would not be in these relationships. And then, but it doesn't stop in the suffering of the woman. This, 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 this kind of mindset goes along to, you know, breeding uh, all kind of catastrophic consequences in the children. Because as a result of being married wrongly or being married to the wrong people, then a woman gives birth to a child that maybe he cannot, he cannot sustain, maybe she cannot sustain or she cannot take care of or she, can, she, is not, is, or, or she gave birth in a situation where that is not conducive, a situation that is not conducive for her, an environment that is not conducive for her to raise up godly children, an environment that will never be able to go, be good enough to raise up godly children. So as a result of that, those children will grow up and become hooligans, they will become bandits, they will become uh, disobedient, they will, some of them become drug Added. Some of them become thieves and ram robbers. Some of them, you know, and and, and the, the, that is a tragedy to a, any woman. For a woman to see a child become, you know, a destitute or to become uh, down and out or a drunkard or, uh, or you know, a drug addict or a thief or a, a criminal. That is a double tragedy for that woman. And how many women today? I mean. You know, in some in this country that I am right now in in Ukraine, there are thirty thousand women that are report that are that every year that are reported to have been taken to the emergency and trauma tra trauma department of hospitals in Ukraine. Thirty thousand women, thirty thousand women. That is just in Kiev alone, where we, we have a country of uh, where we have population of. Uh, four million people. So in this city, we only have four million people and there are 30,000 women that have been traumatized, that their heads have been broken, their hands have been broken, some of them have been beaten, some of them have been killed in some countries. Only because they had felt that they needed to marry because they wanted to remove the stigma that the society has placed on them that they have to be married. They don't want to remain single. So it's an incredible pressure that comes upon women, women thinking that, you know, for them to overcome that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that cliche or that, uh, that, that uh, stigma that is on them as, as a, you know, some of them are called uh, old virgins or uh, spinsters and things like that. And, 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 and they, they just want to give birth to the child or, you know, appear to, appear to the society as if they are normal. Or they want to be, appear to the society as accepted. They want to be accepted by the norms of the society, by the, by the, by the expectations of the society. And that brings about so much destruction. That brings about so much pain. That brings about so much, you no, know, I mean, how many, if you could imagine how many people are not happy, 
in marriages. If you could just imagine how many people are not, are not married, just because they feel they must marry. So that's why I'm saying, before any woman thinks about marriage, if you are a woman right there, and if you are a girl, before you think of marriage, you first of all have to think about self-sufficiency and self-fulfillment. Self-fulfillment is superior to status of marriage status or more marriage status. Self-fulfillment is superior to, to either you have children or you don't have children. Self-fulfillment must come first. You must first of all discover that you were created by God. And that God that created you had a purpose in mind why he created you. That God that created you did not create you in vain. He did not just send you here to the earth to experiment your life if you are going to be successful or not. That God that created you had a goal in mind, had a purpose in mind, had a vision in mind. And the vision, the thought, and the purpose that he has in mind concerning you is all good. This purpose and his vision and his intention for you is for good and not for evil. His intention and his purpose for your life is to make you, you know, to give you an expected end. He wants to give you a future. He wants to give you life and life with abundance. That is why he sent you here. But more importantly than that, he is more interested than just in your life. He's more interested than just how good you feel yourself or how wonderful, you know, you, you your, 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 your life will be on earth. He is more interested in his purpose for creating you. Now remember, no human being is born to this world just by accident. Nobody comes to this world without an, a, a, an established purpose, even before he was born. There is no human being that comes to this world without a pre-planned intention, without a pre-planned goal and purpose for that particular life. Nobody is here by accident, my brother, my sister. It doesn't matter if you are married or you are not married. Before you be even realize that you are a woman, even before your mother and father realize that you are a woman or you are going to be born a baby girl, God already had his own distinctive will, not just his will, his own distinctive vision, his own purpose for your life. He already had a job for you. He already had an agenda for you. He already knew what he wanted you to become. So, I mean, look, look at the Bible. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, it says, why before you were in your mother's womb, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. And while you were there, I anointed you. I anointed you. He call, I called you and I anointed you as a prophet of the nation. That is a principle right there. That scripture is giving us a principle about how God works. God doesn't allow a pregnancy to take place. God does not allow a life, not just to be pregnant, impregnated, or to be preg I mean, to, to, to come into the, I mean, to, to, not just the pregnancy to be take place, but God would not allow that child to be given birth to without him selecting a vision, without him selecting the purpose for that child. Even before the conce you know, the consumption, the conception and the pregnancy of that child, God had already had a plan that he has for that child to go and fulfill. So God only allows people for whom he has a purpose to be born. So if God had allowed you to be born, is even this is before you are even your your which is before your sex was even determined, before your sex was determined, before it was established that you are going to be a girl or you are going to be a man, God had an agenda for you. God had planned for you to accomplish some certain assignment and some certain vision on the earth. So it is in accordance to that vision now that God will package you and make you to be you to have your own temperament, your character, and your, your particular uh, environment where you are born and where you are raised up and all that. So it is all to walk into and to line up with the assignment that he has for you. Let me even say, let me even state it clearer. You remember that in, Gen in uh, Exodus chapter 3, the Bible says that the cry of the children of Israel have risen up to me. 
And so, as a result, when the Bible said that God had heard the cry and the prayers of the children of Israel, as a result of that of those prayers, because he had the prayers and he had the cry of the children of Israel, God decided to respond. And his response was by, give, by conceiving, by giving birth, by giving a conception to Moses. So whenever God hears the cry of a nation, whenever God hears the cry of a people, whenever God hears the cry of the earth, God conceives another soul. Every conception, conception that takes place on the earth is as a result as of some cries, of some prayers that are rising up to God. When the cry of some spheres of life, of some areas of life, of some, you know, you no know, segments of the earth, when they come up to God, God gives birth to another child. God gives birth to another conception. God allows us another conception to take place. So everyone that is giving birth to God had already determined the assignment even before the conception happened. So it is only because God had an assignment that a concept conception now takes place. God already always prepares the assignment. God always prepared the assignment. He always prepares the mission. He always prepares the purpose before he allows the conception to take place. And the conception and even the purpose itself is only as a result. It's only an answer to the cry of people from the earth. So your vision is as a result of some cries. Your, vi you, uh, your conception is as a result of some prayers. Your conception is, a, is an answer to some people's prayer. So you are already an answer to people's prayer. Don't let anybody tell you who you are. Don't let every, anybody tell you who you are not. Don't let anybody uh, you know, try to tell you if you are important or you are not important. You are already important. You are already significant significant all by yourself. Why? Because you were conceived for a purpose. You were conceived by an intention. There was a goal. There was an intention. There was a mission for you. You were already so important in the eyes of God that he put you together. He packaged you to be the solution to some issues and to some problems on the earth. And that is why, as a matter of fact, marriage and, you know, marital relationship, especially wrong marital relationship, might be a distraction from the very same thing that God sent you here to do. For it might be a distraction from the very same purpose for which God intentionally created you, originally created you. So you are not you are not supposed to be created. I mean, you, you are not created to come to the earth to begin to struggle and find out who you are. You are already so significant. You are already so important. That is why you are even allowed to come here. Now, even bi the biology and medical science tells us that before a seed, before any, uh, uh, you know, any seed becomes an embryo and becomes a, a, a child, a fetus, that that egg that, that, that mashes, mashes with the, the, the egg of the woman and becomes the embryo, that that egg has struggled, has fought with other, maybe millions of other eggs. You know, in every man's egg that comes to a woman, there are millions of them that were struggling for life. But God only gives life to one. God only allow, allows one out of like, 100 million eggs, like 100 million. So you have already fought the most important fight of your life. You have already proven that you are significant enough. You have already proven that you are a champion. You have already proven by your very appearance on the earth that you are the winner. You are the one that won and overcame in the battle of hundreds of millions of cells and, 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 uh, and, 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 you know, struggles. So you are already significant. And for, for you to be that person that is giving birth to, it is because God has a purpose for you. So God packaged you from heaven already for some purpose here on earth. You were specially created. You were specially packaged. You were custom made by God. God custom made you. God packaged you. God, God assembled you for a divine
divine assignment that he has for you on the earth. So the most important thing for a baby girl and the most important thing for a woman and the most important thing for a girl is not to be thinking about marriage. Please deliver yourself from this deception. Deliver yourself from this lie. This is one of the most, the strongest lies on in our world today. Thinking that because you are a woman, just thinking that because you have a womb and a breast, because you grow up to be a girl, so now do you have to be you have to be sent into 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 compulsory marriage. You have to be compulsorily begin to think about marriage. Yes, you have the potential to marry. You have have the potential to be pregnant you have the potential to give birth to children you have the potential to become a mother you have the potential to become a wife but you don't have to you don't have to there is nowhere in the bible where it's written that you have to by force by force by fire by fire that you have to have become a wife or you have to become a a mother it is not compulsory the bible talks about uh, about enoch for the men but he, the reason it talks about enoch uh, you, you know, for the uh, you know, for the men is because you know it has to be either they are done by intentionally or not. But if the the whole concept of eunuch is the fact that their celibacy is welcomed by God, even Paul spoke about it that you don't have to marry, you don't have to be you to be wedded. It's you have the choice, and you you know, in fact, even. If you it 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 shouldn't even if you marry or you don't marry, it shouldn't be the thing that determines your self-esteem. Your self-esteem should not be based on your marriage status. Your self-esteem should not be based on how many children you have. Your self-esteem should your self-fulfillment, the your your self-respect, your self-worth should not be coming out of this. And it doesn't matter if you marry or you don't marry. You must attain self-sufficiency. You must attain some level of maturity, and you must attain the some level of uh, 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 you know uh, of self-worth before before you even think of marriage. So it is it is a distraction that is unnecessary when people you know neglect their God-given vision when they neglect their purpose for which they were originally created. And the only thing they are thinking about now is being a wife or being a woman. Like I have children. I have two daughters. And they know that even though they, they might marry or they might not marry, but it is not the number one thing in their priority. They know that they have a purpose before they even discover they are a woman. They are, they are girls. They know they already had a purpose before, when they were even still in the status of a fetus in the, in the stomach. They knew when they were still a kid, when nobody was paying attention to them, that they were a woman or wrong woman, they already knew that they had a mission and a purpose on the earth. They know what their purpose is now. They are already getting ready for their purpose and their mission now. That is supreme. That is more important than what happens later if they will marry or they will not marry. If they marry later, good. If they don't marry, good also. But they must find fulfillment in God. And the only way to find fulfillment in God is to find fulfillment in God's assignment, in God's intention, in God's mission for you. It, it is when you are in God's will, in God's hundred percent will, when you align yourself with God's desire, that is when you find fulfillment. Your fulfillment must be lined up with God's intention. Your fulfillment must be in line with God's immediate instruction to you. Your fulfillment must not be in line with men's expectations. Your fulfillment must not be aligned with people's talks and traditional expectations. Your, your, your fulfillment and your satisfaction in life must be built and established in doing what God asked you to do. Your confidence must be coming from the fact that you know that you know you are created for this. You know that this is your passion, this is your vision, this is what you are supposed to do in life. And you are facing it and you are doing it and that is where your basis of satisfaction is supposed to come from. Your satisfaction is supposed to be coming from the fact that you are at peace with God. You are settled with God. You are in unison with God. You are in one with God. You know you are working with God and you are pleasing him. The ability to work with him, to please him, to carry out his instructions and to you know to do what he wants, his heart desire and to be working with him and pleasing him on a daily basis should be the source of your joy and should be 
the reason why you are happy or you are not happy. Can you imagine how many people are not happy just because they, they, they are thinking of marriage? Can you imagine how many girls are suffering just because they are thinking of a marriage? Because they've been taught that the most important thing in the life of a girl is marriage and motherhood. They've been taught that the most important thing is if somebody takes you to be married or not, or if you have a child or not. What a fallacy. What a deception. So the very first place, the very first area where every girl must attain self-sufficiency, self-fulfillment is in making sure that he has discovered the calling of God for his life, for her life. Is in making sure that she knows the purpose of God for her life. Is in making sure that she is pursuing and she is aligned with God in what God has created her for. She must find out why she's here in the first place. You know, marriage is additional blessing. Children are additional blessing. You know, both they are secondary. The f things that are you no know, primary is the will of God for your life. What God created you for. Why were you created? Why were you sent here? That is the very you no know, primary purpose of God's creation for any human. Either you are a man or you are a woman. And now, because even if you marry. If you don't have, if you don't find fulfillment, if you don't find your calling, if you don't discover who you are on earth, that marriage will only turn to frustration. That marriage will only turn to anger. And you will not just be frustrated all by yourself alone. You will be frustrating the guy who took you and who married you. You will be frustrating the children that come to that marriage. It will just be a whole you know, a whole trip of frustration. Your whole 20, 30, 40 years in that marriage is just a crisis, a bunch of crisis and conflict and quarrel and disagreement and depression and tears. Why should you put yourself in such a cage when you could, first of all, take your time and find out what God created you for? Take your time and seek to please your master to make gladden the heart of your heavenly father why you could find out his will the bible said thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven that should be our prime purpose for everybody male or female that's why the bible says that he that is single that is not married is concerned about the will of god He's thinking about the will of God. He's thinking about the things that pertain to God. Every woman should make that thought about the will of God, about the things that pertain to God, to be a priority first. As, as a matter of fact, I personally think that the most I mean, the, the, the right order is that any girl that has not discovered a fulfillment, any girl that has not discovered a calling, any girl that does not know, at least to know what she is called to do on earth, what her purpose are, what her visions are, what her passions are, she has to at least discover it, or even better still, to have started implementing those, those ideas at that purpose before she could get, get married. I think no girl should go into marriage until she has discovered who she is until she had discovered her self-worth, until she had discovered her, 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 her value, her calling, her purpose, her goals in life. I think the beauty of life and of marriage is only for those ladies who first of all discovered who they were before they go into that relationship. Because if you go into a relationship without discovering who you are, you will first of all, you might discover it later, but you will suffer, 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 suffer before you discover it. You will cry so many times you will have so many frustrations, you will have so many too much depression before you finally discover who you are made to be. But if you don't discover who you are made to be to, to, to be on earth, you will be at the mercy of people's opinion, you will be at the mercy of the fellow of the relatives of the family, you will be at, at the mercy of some man, of that man. That man will be telling you to do this or do that. You must first of all know that you have a calling. You have a calling for for yourself and by yourself first. God put something in you. There is a seed in you, a seed of God in you, a seed of God's calling in you. You were created for something. And 
You must discover that before you begin to think of relationships. You must discover that before you go, you begin to go into any relationship with any man. Because once you begin to hang out around the man, you get distracted. You begin to get distracted and you don't even have to... Have How many people have, been, have lost their vision? How many people have lost their passion? How many people have lost their calling or they have neglected their calling only because they got involved with some men? Because they fell in love. So they fell in love and they fell from grace. They fell in love and fell from, from, their, from their destiny, from their calling and from, what, 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 from their entitlement in heaven. So, so that is the wise thing to do. The only wise thing to do is to make sure that you find harmony with yourself before you begin to try to find harmony with the man. First of all, find harmony with yourself. Find balance with yourself. Find sufficiency with yourself. Find self-fulfillment within yourself, in your own heart, within yourself and your God. Find a balance. Find a relationship. Find self-fulfillment between you and God. Know that you are on the right path. Know that you are already on the path of pleasing God, exalting Him, living for Him. So that when the man comes, you are not just now trying to, you know, balance it up. How to balance the marriage and the family. No, you know what is priority. You know that your family, I mean, your calling is the priority. You are not confused. You, are, you cannot be manipulated. You know exactly what is important in your life. You know how many hours you want to give into fulfilling of your calling. And you know how many hours you want to give into just rearing your family. So you know what, what belongs where. But when you don't know all that and you just put your head in some relationship or in some marriage and you don't even know if you have a calling or not, oh, wow, you are in to a rough ride. You are in for a rough ride, my dear. You are in for a very, very rough ride. So the greatest gift you could, a lady could give herself, there are, there are four things I wanted to talk about where you must find fulfillment, self-fulfillment, where you must find sufficiency, where you must be self-sufficient before you marry. The first area is in your calling. The first area is in your purpose. So you must, every little girl, if you have a girl in your house, if you have a daughter, you must teach those young girls, you must teach your daughter that the very first thing she should bother herself with is about who she's made to be, who she's created to be, what she was sent here to do, what question, what you know, challenges she's supposed to resolve with her life. And so she let her forget about children first. Let forget about men first. Let her forget about relationships first. Let her even forget about, you know, trying to make money and things like that. Let her think fulfillment. Let her think self-discovery first. And a man that has, or a woman that has discovered herself or himself in that area will be a happy person. And that kind of person can never be manipulated any longer. That kind of person cannot be deceived. That kind of person cannot be lied to because he knows the truth. He knows the truth about himself. I mean, she, sorry, she knows the truth about herself. She knows what she wants in life. She's already you know, harmonious with herself in that sense. She's already fulfilled about, about herself. She knows where she's going. So she's a person that knows what she's called to do, who knows her calling. She's focused. That person is focused. That person is purposeful. That person is always developing himself. That person is always growing. That person is always pursuing something. That person is not a boring person. That person is not living in depression. That person is not waiting for somebody to come and pick her up. That person is not going to be at the mercy of some, some, some wicked men that are going to use and misuse her or abuse her or insult her. That person is not waiting for somebody to come and pick her up to become their marriage, <laughs> or I mean, to become their wives, or their mother, or their sister, or the, somebody, the, the, that person could not be sold out. That person could not be pitied. You know, some women are waiting for somebody to come and pity them. And so those men think marrying them is doing them a favor. So no, 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 you, you, that, those kind of women will never be at the mercy of some men trying to do them a favor. So men will not be in the position to manipulate them, to be coming with money and say that, oh, I came with money now, so you could be manipulated and you could be bought and sold. No, no, no. A woman that knows her fulfillment, that knows her calling, that knows her purpose, and that wants to please God first of all, she's not going to be, to be afraid that somebody can buy, she will not, that can buy her. She knows that nobody can buy 
her. She knows her purpose. She knows her, 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 her vision. She knows she's pleasing God, first of all. She's living for God, first of all. So she's not living with the worries that a lot of women are living in. That kind of girl or that kind of lady, she escapes all the worries, all the, the unnecessary worries, all the unnecessary talks, all the deceptions that are going on in the world, all the all the broken hearts that are going up in the world. Uh, she, she's, she escapes all that. And that kind of girl that knows that she's having a goal and a purpose and that that is uh, paramount in her life, she will never be put, she will never be told that you, your job is to sit down in the house and be washing plates and cleaning the, the floor and cooking for, for uh, two, three hours. You use two hour, uh, one hour or two, two hours to cook in the morning, three hours to go to the store, uh, to go to the market, another two hours to cook in the afternoon, another three hours to cook in the evening, and then make the table ready for everybody. And that's the only, the only thing you are doing in the mo in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then you don't have life. Before you know it, you you know, you already put on 100 kilograms and then you are already looking like a, a babushka or like a grandmother, you know, somewhere, you know. So a woman that knows her purpose will not allow herself to be buried in the, 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 in the mundane things of this world. A, a lady that knows her worth will not be buried in the frivolous activities of trying to make everybody happy apart from herself. And even not even about making herself happy. She's, she's, she, 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 she a, a person that knows who she is. She knows that first of all, her primary concern is to make her God happy. And her primary concern is to make a God fulfilled. I mean, a, a God satisfied with her. So if a girl, if we know your calling, you know that by fulfilling your calling, you made your God happy. By fulfilling your calling, you made your God satisfied with you. I mean, and that is your priority. That is your passion, first of all. So, to be, you know, trying to make people happy with you by washing plates and washing socks and washing you know, pants, for everybody, pants for everybody, you know, you know that that is not your place anymore. So, you will not be deceived into thinking that your old destiny is just to sit in the kitchen. You will not be deceived to be, to be told that your old destiny is just to be giving birth every, every year to another child. No, no, no. You know that, yes, you know, being a wife could be a blessing, but you will be able to know where to put what assignment. You will be able to know what you are going to do and what you are not going to do. You know that, yes, being a mother is a blessing, but you know exactly what you, you will be able to plan out your time for, for your family. You will be able to plan out your time for your husband. You will be able to plan out your time for your children. And you will also be able to plan out your destiny for God and living for God and for yourself and for fulfillment and being a, a blessing to your generation, being a blessing to your generation. A woman that knows a, a, a calling and that knows a purpose in life, she knows that it is too small a thing for her just to live for her own family. It is too small a thing for her just to live for her own children. That is too small. She knows that she's here to be a blessing to humanity. She knows that she's here to be a blessing to the nations. She knows that through her service and through her calling and through her giftings, that she could be a blessing to a greater number of people than just her 10 children or her five children or her three children. She knows that she's not just here for a husband. She's not just here for her children. She's not just, life, her life is not just about her, and her, and her daughter Anna and her son John. No, no, no. That is too boring a life. She could be, she could, she, she knows that there is a river of life that flows from her. And that river of life needs to flow the blessings of God into the nations of the earth and to, 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 to everywhere. So that kind of lady will not be deceived. So the very first thing that we need to start uh, our, you know, we need to let every lady know is that. In fact, even men, I want to encourage the men, you have to tell your girl, the girl that you like or the girl that you love, tell her that I'm not going to marry you unless you discover who you are. Let me help you discover your calling. Let me help you discover who you are. Help her before you marry her. Help her to discover her calling. Help her to become purposeful. Help her to have a goal. Help her to live for a vision. Help her to begin to, 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 to discover her calling and to fulfill that calling even before you marry her. But if you're already married, if you've already married her, then you must also, that the more reason why you must quickly begin to help her now to discover who she is. Otherwise, if you, if you, don't, if you don't help her to, be, to discover her calling, if you don't help her to find a purpose in life, she is going to become a heavy load on your neck. She's, she's going to be just become a burden 
on your neck, on your family, she's going to become a crisis for you. So you have to manage that crisis for the rest of your life. So you help your wife or your fiance find a calling. Help her find a calling. It is the role of a woman to help a lady find a purpose and a calling in life. But she must also know, even you as the wife, as the husband, even you as the fiance, you must also tell her that our goal is not just to become a wife or and that our purpose in life is not just to become uh, uh, a, a wife or, or a mother. Tell her that, yes, I want to marry you, I love you, but don't let all your life be just about becoming a housewife. Don't let that be your goal. Nobody is created just to be a housewife. Nobody is created just to be, you know, to, to be going to, the, to, to give birth only to other children. Let her, first of all, give birth to herself. Let her, first of all, discover herself. Let her, first of all, give life to herself. Then, you know, when, 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 when she, she's fulfilled, she's happy with herself, she is happy with God, she knows that God is happy with her, then it is easier for her to also bring that joy and that happiness to her children, to also bring that fulfillment to, 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 uh, to her family. She will help her, children, you know, her, 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 her husband, she will help her children to also find fulfillment, to also find fulfillment. So, so that is the very first area where every woman must, first of all, be fulfilled in life. Every woman must be taught, and every woman must know that she is, first of all, a human being. She is, first of all, created by God. She is, first of all, a child of God. She is, first of all, a servant of God. She is, first of all, uh, on a mission for God. She is, first of all, created and sent here by God. So God's priority has to become her priority. God said that we were all created. In fact, all things were, he said all things were created by him and for him. Every woman was created by God and for God, first of all, before for husband, before for family, and before for children. Sometimes we think that it's such a noble thing. Oh, I'm living for children. Oh, my life is about my children. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you are first of all created for God before your children. You are first of all created for God before your children. So that is one area where every woman must come to fulfillment and self-sufficiency sufficiency before she begins to com uh, uh, contemplate marriage. Before you think of marriage, every woman must be self-sufficient in, in her calling. She must have that peace. She must have that harmony within her that, yes, 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 I know my calling. I know what, at least that one I've said to do with God. I know what I'm living for. I am fulfilled. I know what I'm pursuing. I know what I'm living for. So she's always driving. I mean, having a drive. She's always pursuing something. She's always living by faith. She's always living by the invisible. Because then God can say, yes, she's a righteous because the, the, I mean, she's the just or the righteous, because the righteous shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And living by faith is living by that vision that God has given unto you. Pursuing your vision is living by faith. If you don't live for free vision, you don't live by faith. So that a, a person is only living when he is living for vision. A person is only living when he's living for vision and for purpose. So if you are not living for vision, not living for purpose, you are not living at all. You are you have been lost in, in, in times and in and in ages. You are you have just been lost. You are a waste. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Because without faith it's impossible to waste to please God. So if you are not living by faith, you are not pleasing God. And that means you are a waste. And to live by faith means to live by vision. To live for vision. To live aspiring for something in front. And that is when you are living. <laughs> All right, now, the next area where every girl must attain self-sufficiency, where you must be self-sufficient before you even think about marriage, is every lady needs to be economic, I mean, to be, mm, to be, uh, how do I say this in Russian, in English language, I have it in Russian language, yeah. Mm, you need to be self-sufficient in taking care of yourself, in taking care of yourself, in, in managing your life, mm -hmm. in managing your life, in, as a human being, just as a person. As, you know, so what, what I mean is that uh, you have to be self-sufficient in the sense that you are not, uh, 
you can live on your own. So uh, you can run around your life. You can run your life without anybody coming to help you. So nobody is helping to tell to tell you to to help you say okay. I mean, you, you can take care of your hair without nobody telling you that you have to do that. You can wake up in the morning the right time when you need to wake up. I mean, it's your domestic life. You must be able to organize your life. You must be able to have a self manage. You, you must be able to manage your own life. You must be able to have an independent, you know. Self-sufficient kind of living in the not in the area of vision, but in the area of your personal entity, in the area of your own self. That means you are able to feed yourself. That means you are able to uh, to clothe yourself. That means that you are able to make your own money. That means that you are able to decide what you are going to wear. You, you are able to decide what you are going to eat. You are able to decide maybe where you want to live. So a lady must get to a place before she begins to think about, um, about, about marriage. Before you begin to think about it, become independent as a girl. Become an independent girl by yourself. Become, become self, self-reliant. Self, you know, self-reliant for yourself and by yourself. You know, become a girl, a full-grown girl. You know, what that means is that don't just live in the house and your mother is the one still waking you up at 8 o'clock. Ah, it's 12 o'clock. Oh, make you go, go, and buy, go and buy. It's 12 o'clock already. You have not woken up. Ah, wake up. Oh, it's already 11 o'clock. Go and bath. Go and wash your teeth or go and wear. Ah, and you are already 25 years old. So if you're already 25 years old, then it's your mother who has to come and wake you up. And it's your mother who has to cook and say, okay, there is food there. Oh, go and eat. Ah, oh, my daughter. <laughs> oh, okay, you've not done your hair. Okay, let's let's come. Let me help you do your hair. You know, and then you don't have a job. You've never worked. So you don't know life. So what I'm saying is that you must, as a girl, you must know how to come out of the of the brooks of your mother, of your father, of your parents. You must know how to adopt to life, adapt to life. You must have adapted to life. Learn to adapt to life by yourself. Learn what it means to go shopping. Learn what it means to go buy food stuff or food products. Learn what it means to cook for yourself. Learn what it means to, to go and shop for your clothing. Learn what it means to make money that you use to buy your own clothes. Learn what it means to make money to buy your own food that you eat. Learn to, you know, to dress, to wear your own kind of dress that you want to wear. You know, learn, you know, the, the, you know to, be, to, to choose your cosmetics. Learn to make yourself look the way you want to look. Learn to make yourself look attractive. Determine the kind, learn to understand what kind of, what cosmetics means, what beauty means, what clothes thing means, what it means to be elegant, what it means to go down the street by yourself, what it means to go to the shop by yourself, what it means to go to church by yourself. You know, become self, self-sufficient. Become self-sufficient for yourself. Practical life living. It's, you know, become more, become so, you know, independent. Become self-independent. I mean, in real life situation, become, you know, independent to take care of yourself. Become independent in, as a human being, as a girl. You know, it's even better for you to, uh, to, to, to learn to, when you, if you are already 18 or 20 years old, learn to live alone. Learn to live alone. Learn to get a, an apartment for yourself. Learn to maybe start your own thing or start your own business. Go and get some job experience. Go get some job experience. Go, you know, go, you know, go, go learn what is being independent. You know, I like what some parents do. Some parents send their uh, children to college from home. So go live in the college. Cook, learn to cook for yourself there in the college. Learn to wake yourself up to go to work. Learn to use the alarm. Learn to, <laughs> learn to make your hair. Learn to, you know, to, to, to work. Learn to just be a human being. That is the other area, the second area where you must be self-sufficient. Self-sufficient in living alone. Self-sufficient in living by yourself. Self-sufficient in taking care of yourself. Self-sufficient in meeting your own needs.
Yes, learn to be self-sufficient. Learn to be self-sufficient. Number three, where you must attain self-sufficiency. Where you must attain self-sufficiency. You must learn to be self-sufficient psychologically, mentally. Psychologically and mentally. You must grow up mentally. Some people might grow up physically, domestically, like they are able to take care of themselves, to, to go and cook, they wear clothes very well, they do makeup, they go, they, they are able to fulfill the second point that I make. But they cannot, they are not independent enough psychologically and mentally. What do I mean by this? Learn to take decisions by yourself. Learn to take independent decisions. Learn to use your head. Learn to weigh decisions. Learn to think critically. Learn to, 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 to have critical thinking, analytical thinking. Learn how to weigh matters. Learn to use your head. Mental uh, independent, you know, sufficient, uh, independence. Be sufficient, be independent mentally and psychologically. That means that you are not waiting for your mother to take all the decisions for you. That means you are not calling home every five minutes to call your father to come and rescue you and take every decision for you. That means you are not calling your brother or your sister or your girlfriend to come and take every decision for you. Take your decisions. Learn to take decisions. Be independent in decision making. That's what I'm saying. Be independent and in decision making. You can ask for advice. But take your decision after you've asked for advice. Listen to all advices. Listen to everybody's opinion. And take your own decisions. Learn to live psychologically. Learn to know what is going on around you. Learn to know what the world is. What, what is going on in your world and around you in, the, in this whole world. Don't wait for everybody's affirmation. Don't be dependent on your pastor. Don't be waiting for your pastor to take the decision when you should go for holidays or when you shouldn't go. Don't be waiting for your pastor to tell you what, where you should travel to, where you shouldn't travel to. Don't be waiting for your pastors to tell you uh, what church to go to, what church not to go to, what, where, what preacher to listen to, what preacher not to listen to. Don't be waiting for your church to tell you, you know, uh, 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 what school to go to, what school not to go to, what college to go to, what job to go to, what job to take, what job not to take. Don't be dependent on a church or your pastor or you can seek the advice, but not more than advice. Take your own decision about the church you want to go to, about the, 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 the preachers you want to listen to, about the, the, you know, the college you want to go to, about the, the profession you want, to, you want to do, about how to fulfill your own mission. Take your own decisions. Don't make any pastor or prophet make you be dependent on them. Don't, don't make any pastor be telling you, you know, that you must seek advice from them before you eat. What you should eat, what you should drink, what you should drink, what you should wear, who you should marry, you know, and all that. Don't wait for approval, you know, of people before you do any little thing. That means to be mentally matured. That means to be psychologically matured. That means learn to take responsibility for your deceptions. I mean, for your decisions. Learn to take responsibility for your actions. Don't become, you know, a, a puppet in the, in the hand of some friends, some girlfriends or boyfriends. Don't wait for some boyfriend to come and take, tell you what to do. Don't wait for some men to take decisions for you. Don't wait for your girlfriend's order to take decision for you. Seek the advice, hear their opinion, but take your own decisions. And learn to argue out your decisions. Learn to, you know, to prove why, I mean, to argue out why you make that decision. Why that decision, why not the other decision? Don't be dependent on television. Don't, don't be watching television from morning to night. Don't be dependent on serials, movies, t 
TV series, TV movies, as if that is what your joy should be dependent on. Don't let your joy be dependent on TV. Don't let your joy be dependent on opera. Don't let your joy be dependent on, you know, some TV programs or movies or television or serials. Let your joy and your life be dependent on you, on your calling, on your purpose, on your God, on your vision, on what you want to attain in life. Don't be independent on all those magazines, women magazine this, women magazine that, and all this, you know, soap opera that, soap opera here, you know. Become your own self. Become your own person. Think about your purpose. Think about your vision. Think about your, your goals that you want to attain in life. Think about your God and your des des desire to please Him and to live for Him. Accomplish your purpose. Pursue your purpose. Pursue your goal. Think about your, you know, you know, think about your destiny. Don't, you know, become dependent on, on, uh, on public opinion. Don't be dependent on, you know, on what everybody else is doing around you. Don't just follow blindly everybody. Be your own man. Take your own decisions. Because if you are not depend, if you are not independent like that, a man will come that will put you in some shame or in some net, and you will not be able to move left and right without him. And he will take all your money. He will deceive you. He will lock you up somewhere. You will become, you know, emotionally dependent on him. You will get pregnant for him. You will you'll be deceived into some relationships with him that are wrong, and uh, and you know, and you, you your heart will be broken and your life will be broken. So be your own man. Start your own business. Take your own decision. Next area of life, is that number four, number, oh, number what, number three? Or number four? Number four now. You know, the area where you have to be uh, sufficient first is your, in your calling, in your purpose. The second area in your private life is, you know, you have to be independent, like domestically, you know, in private life. The second area you have to be independent is in, you know, is in... Uh, you know, making decision, decision making, independent, psychologically, mentally. Thirdly, another area where number four, number four, sorry, number four, another area where you need to be sufficient and be independent and be self fulfilled is in the area in is, is social soci, socially. You have to be self fulfilled socially. You have to be independent socially. Social independence. You have to have. You have to be dependent. So I mean, independent socially. What does that mean? That means that you don't, you 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 are not depressed, sitting at home every day from morning to night, and you cannot. You are afraid of going out, or you are afraid of. You don't have social life. That means you must have social life. You must be matured socially. You must be able to build relationships. You must be able to build healthy relationships. Socially, you must be able to know what's going on in your world. Some people just know what's going on in their books. They only know their subject. You know, you must be enlightened. That means you must be able to build relationships with people. You must be able to socialize. You must be able to socialize. You must be able to, you know, you know, dress normally, go out to visit, you know, your friends, go to your birthday party if they invite you, if you have time for it, go to your... Don't you, you know some people, they're afraid of even going to, to anywhere. They, cannot, they don't have any social life. Develop your social life. That's why church is good. Church helps you to develop social life. If they will not control you, of course, if they will not put you in, in prison. So, so, you know, develop a, a social life. Have... Have friends that you relate with, you know, have healthy relationships, uh, have good friends, have good girlfriends, have good relationship, you know, but don't be dependent on them. Don't be dependent on them. So social, be social, be a social person. Be somebody that no one could talk to, you know, be socially educated, you know, be able to talk about, you know, uh, uh, countries where they are, be able to talk about presidents of countries, econom economy, uh, politics, be able to talk about what's going on in the world, be able to talk about, you know, subjects that are interesting to women, you know, be socially, be, so, be socially aware as a woman, you know, I don't know the, the topics that women are talking about, you know, what, know what life is about, you know, take interest, at least you must know who opera is, at least, opera, 
You must know at least who she is, at, but don't just be dependent on her. You must know who Hillary Clinton is. You must know, you know, other things like that. That's just social life. You must be able to talk to people and find them interesting, and they must find you interesting as well. Reach out to people, value people, value yourself, be a blessing to people, build bridges. Build bridges. Don't just live in depression on your own. And say you don't have friends, you don't have, you don't go anywhere, nobody can talk to you. Learn to relate well to, to, to your world. And social media has been as is, is, is a very good instrument for 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 building you know, social interaction and relationship now. So social media could help you to build relationship. Con connect with your old friends, you know, connect with your family friends and reach out to them. So these four areas, every girl must find themselves. The most important one is in what I said, I put them according, according to their order. The most important area where every girl must attain self-sufficiency, be sufficient before she begins to think about marriage is in vision, in calling, in the calling of God upon your life. In the purpose of God upon your life, that is the most area, the most important area where you must find your self fulfillment and your satisfaction. Once you have that, number two area where you must find self fulfillment and self satisfaction is in taking care of yourself, self sufficiency, self independent, self reliance. So you must be able to domestically, you know, take care of yourself as a girl, as a human being, be a human being. Number three. You must, of course, learn to take care of yourself and become, you know, uh, someone of that is a decision making. You must become a decision making person, someone that is independent, that is fulfilled psychologically and mentally. You must be fulfilled psychologically and mentally, take decisions. And finally, you must be socially fulfilled in a relationship, build relationship with people. Don't be boring, you know, be an interesting person. Go out. Um, you relate with people, talk to people, and you know, yeah, and build relationship with people. So that's where I'm going to stop today. That's where I'm going to stop today. Tomorrow morning, I'll be back again talking to the girls and helping the girls to become ready for marriage and for life. I'm going to come back tomorrow to help the girls know how to become independent. I want to talk tomorrow about how to become independent. How a girl could become independent. How to truly become independent. That will be tomorrow. How to practically become independent. That will be tomorrow morning and then evening as well. So let's go and share this link if you don't mind. You have a button. You must have a button there. You should have a button uh, under this video somewhere. Press it to get a copy for yourself. Press that button to get a copy, to get a copy of this message. Maybe you want to watch it again. Maybe you want to show it to your daughter, to your friend, to your girlfriend, to your boyfriend, to anybody, to your father, to your mother. You know, go and, sh you know, if you press the button, it will come over to your timeline. So you'll be able to have a copy of it. But write something as well. Write something for your friends to be able to watch it. Write some words, maybe some comments, some remarks, so that people will be able to go and check what is inside. If you don't write anything, you just copy it, people will not watch it. But if you go and write something and write some comments, then people will take interest and like to watch it. And you need to watch it as well again to be able to, you know, really become uh, self-sufficient and independent. Uh, uh, So, and uh, yeah, let me see what you are writing. Let me see what you are writing. Uh, let me see your comments. What do you think about these messages? Is it just the men, women who are writing? The men disappeared? <laughs> the men decided to disappear, right? <laughs> what are the men and the women thinking about this? Is talking to the women, to the girls, to the daughters of God. She go for said, "This is all run brainwashing." Who <laughs> no, who no, no go no. Oh, okay. No, whoever is. Uh, ignorant is going to become knowledgeable as a result of this teaching. What 
that what are people saying? Okay, uh, Shigo said, you deserve a very shield drink for this very hot message. <laughs> T.Y. say, we love you. You have delivered us. Oh, God bless you, <laughs> great coach mentor. <laughs> That's T.Y. saying that. <laughs> Seguin Eka, Eka Kitie. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. It was not only beneficial to the ladies, but to all of us. Okay. Bosse Fanyajola, thank you very much, sir. This is awesome. God bless you. Omonike uh, Ikea, they said, I have shared more than five times already. <laughs> Faith Toji said, very nice teaching. Paul say, when someone says you are too independent for your good, what does that mean? Don't mind them. They want to control you. Favor Emmanuel say, when you discover the will of God for you, for your life as a woman, you will be bold and focused and every other thing like marriage, children, man, it is easy. have to respect these tasks ahead of you. That is so true. Deborah Nuhu, Pastor, you are just on, so on point. To a very large extent, I'm self-sufficient in two, number two, three, four. But number one, God help me. I'm getting there by his grace. Now, number one is talking about calling. You can go and look for my messages. You will see a link here, a link from me here in this comment where all the, mess, the other things I've recorded are there. So I, have, I've, I did a series on on calling, go and look for those series. They are there. You, if you go, check check one of the links here and press the link, it will take you there to uh, to one of these. Uh, yeah, it will take you to all those stations on my call on the on callings. And Nena she say thank you, sir. You are a genius. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Adiola says this message is very important for every parent with children girls in particular watch and listen folks <laughs> daniel says well i know our ladies have been gingered by this message this is a message all potential and intending ladies must hear <laughs> so bright. I like your jacket. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Rosemary, this is so great, sir. Unbelievable. My life has changed by this right now. I am bet I'm better. Maya, more wisdom, sir. Thank you. Ngoya Sharis. Oh my. Oh my, my, my. Pastor Sunday. I am absolutely startled and blown away by your message tonight. It is in our hands. We have made ourselves become victims because of some parts of our nature. Yes, we are more emotional and do think of everything at the same time. But we have to therefore learn to channel these things wisely. Because emotions or being a woman is not bad. It is how we deal with our emotions and experiences that make us wise or foolish. And here we see women come up with all sorts of concepts and movements to be able to do what men can do when we have not even spent time to embrace who we are and cultivate that. Work on our talents, learn uh, what we need to learn, develop who we want to be, take our own decisions instead of blaming others when we follow them for things we would not have supported if we knew we were in the first who we were in the first place i could write a novel about this in fact i think i would do thank a million times for this inspiration <laughs> thank you <laughs> Ade Kola said, this is Kola from London. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dashe Peter said, it's a good message for both men and women. Okay. 
Terence says, I'm blessed, Pastor. Abba said that they didn't mind blowing. Wish I heard this decades back, Dr. Adelaja. I can pass this on to my daughter, though. Yep. Tim Dotun said, Thank you for those thoughts for our ladies. Ojo Lakwe said, God bless you, sir, for this powerful message. It is bringing great deliverance, breaking down societal strongholds, and building a great generation of women. God bless you, sir. We love you. Thank you. Shola said, this is a major exposition for women, especially those that are yet to get married. I really pray that millions of ladies get to watch this video. Afiniki said, yes, they will disappear because we all have been enlightened. All the wrong guys will disappear. <laughs> uh, Gift says, I have to listen to this message again and again. Uh, Pro say, Pastor, thank you for deliverance, for confirmation, for reassurance, and for affirmation. Deborah said, thanks, Pastor. I'm highly privileged to listen to you. De David said, this message is a blessing to the men as well. You will have a well-rounded wifey. <laughs> Aluwato said, I will ensure that my fiancé fulfills her purpose. I celebrate you, Coach. Good. Laura Ikeobi said, change only comes to those that embrace change. The truth must be spoken. Emmanuel Udeaga says, Pastor, this message is timely. I wish every woman would hear this. We bachelors are tired of meeting girls who look up to men for financial gains. This is probably why I'm still unmarried. Wives are so rare these days. <laughs> uh, Pearl said, I've shared this many times already. Christy, my daughters must listen to this 10 times. That's wise. Uh, Winifred Aquan, profound teaching. Thank you, Pastor. King Joni, Pastor, teach them to respect. Oh, I love this message. God bless you. Where are you preaching from? Past from. Where are you preaching from? Oh, go read my biography there. Go read about, you know, if you go to the timeline, you read about me. Anything you want to read there. Gladys say thank you, thank you, sir. Very important preaching, sir. More grace, sir. Serena Paul, this is great stuff. <laughs> I definitely want to be more independent and to make my own decisions. Angela Paul. Uh, Evangelist Vivian Rose, the men will cash up. Don't worry. You have set many women and young girls free today. Jesus is smiling on you. Ooh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> Edwin, Pastor, I know you are bringing balance to the issues because of all ladies know this before marriage. There could have been less pain in homes. Adeola said, hot message in red hot jacket. Looking good, Dr. Adelaja. The message is so edifying. Thank you. She, Sandra, says, uh, I called my sister, Estra, to listen to this great message themselves because it is very crucial and everyone needs to be enlightened before entering into marriage. You are awesome, Pastor. We appreciate you. Much love. Thank you. Deborah, thanks a lot, Pastor. I definitely will listen to this message, the, to the message on calling as well. Okay. Sharon says, great message, Pastor Adelaja. We must be changed from the inside out, not the outside in. We look... We can look cleaner than the board of health, than the board of health on the ins outside, but be really a great big mess on the inside. Let God do this work on the inside that we can be a blessing to others in all spheres of life. Matthias says, "Great counseling for our women. They are really happy because doctor is really taking it cool with them, unlike the way the men had it." Thanks, Pastor. So for my wife is so happy. Serena says, I needed to hear this and ages, ages ago. Thank you, Pastor. Patty says, uh, thanks, Pastor Sunday. All parents need to hear this and teach their kids. I am learning uh, and need to correct some of the places where I was wrong and naive and a big cause of praise. The buffoness, my husband, is using this teaching. He is doing so well. God bless you, Pastor. <laughs> That's so nice. That's so nice. Love you. Faith told you, said, love the way you laugh, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you. Gift says, I need to settle down to watch this message again and again. 
Molly, thank you, sir. Ida, what about women or female who had no choice? Those who were raped and abused by men, where do they stand in this situation? Especially talking about marriage. Please advise. You might want to write to me personally about that. Uh, my email is pastor at godembassy.org. Pastor at godembassy.org. Galina Krishenka, you are exactly right. <laughs> thank you. Linda, thank you, Daddy. She you a uh, very powerful message for all generations. Thank you. God bless you. Daniel Oshoma, emotion can make you or my you. Please kindly control your emotions. <laughs> bless. Uh, Jolomi, women are not silent for nothing. We are assimilating everything and learning with interest. Very sound teaching, sir. By the way, I love your use of bright colors in the way you dress. So trending. <laughs> Thank you. Kate, uh, Pastor Sunday, thank you so much. Oh, wow, blessed to be on this platform to hear all this. Already shared with my daughters so they don't make my mistakes. You are loved. My, more grace to you. Mary, I am never joined for those single uh, the minors in counseling because they that don't show us the benefit of being single. Only tell us how miserable we're going to be if we were find out our inf mate, in fact, they call, they call them both. But the right thing to find us a uh, field, Ruth was walking when Boaz came. Or Monica said, I know my calling, sir. The only problem I have is that I am financially very buoyant in the other way to be able to finish my first project. May the Lord help me. Uh, uh, Nkiru says, Dr. Adela Jadid just, empower, just empowered us, ladies. He also dressed up for us. You nailed it tonight, sir. We are uplifted and elated. Oshuko says, Thanks a lot, Pastor. I appreciate uh, you. Esther Kuganja, thank you, Pastor, for the great message. Very practical and liberating. Paul, I watched last week's lesson twice. This week, I'm ready to watch three times or more. Elizabeth, what, uh, uh, Pastor, what else can I say? Thank you so much. You are the best father. Uh, Dashe, Peter, God bless you for the blessing, sir. Favor Imane, thank you, sir, for this wonderful message. Believe me, many who had listened to this message today, we wish they had heard it so many years back. But thank God they heard it now. It's never too late to correct the past mistakes. God bless you, Pastor. Anna Simshuk, Pastor, good evening. Privet, Anna. <laughs> Privet, Pablo Peridai. Maria Macajola, thank you. Uh, Dr. Adelaja, I've always been victimized for being independent in my thinking and knowing what I want for my life. And at times, I've wondered if there is something wrong with me, but no more. <laughs> Agbo Yobesi says, you look good. Thank you. <laughs> Ufo Oma said, I will keep sharing. Out. Every girl must hear this. I will not be... I will not be me talking again. It will not be me talking again. I have a weapon now. Love you so much, sir. Things can only get better for me. God bless you all. Uh, Christabel. Hello, Pastor. Please pray for me for specific prayer. Uh, I can't see the specific prayer here. And Ogunle said, thank you, sir. I will definitely listen over and over. God bless you for this teaching. Uh, past, uh, Pro David, Pastor, you spoke to me as well. well. You spoke of me as well. I got a property, and, and my then pastor came to visit and told me and every suitor in the church that I was established and all I needed was a man. Ooh. My God, <laughs> I can't believe that. That's crazy. You needed to see the yeah, yeah variety that came to my way. No, was my favorite, most re reoccurring word, and no was my favorite and most reoccurring word. 
And it has been so ever since. My God. Tim Dutton said, these are rare teachings, not common on pulpits. Thank you, sir, for saying it the way it is. Harmonica said, God bless you, sir. Paul said, I'm sending this to the pastor for his Christmas gift. <laughs> so he can learn and stop pushing his female members into hell on earth. Wow. Ooh, by way of visa marriage. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Timu said, Papa, thank you for being there for me. Patty said, thank you, Pastor. You look stunning. We are blessed to have you in our lives. Thank you, thank you. Pearl, is, <laughs> she, she, Sandra, is crying for you. Well, you see my a link there. The link to all the messages that you have missed over the past six months is there in the link from me, from Dr. Sandra Delaja. So follow the link, and if you've missed some messages in the past, you'll be able to see all the list of the messages. Okay, guys. Okay, girls.